Hey everyone, this video is a review slash analysis of four animated short films, all of which I found on YouTube. The videos are in the description if you want to watch them before you watch this video. Just as a disclaimer, all four can be pretty disturbing. Some go more far than others, but I don't think any of them go too far. Some people may disagree and may be more sensitive to some of these topics because they really aren't just a bunch of creepy visuals. All of them deal with kind of heavy topics. So if that's something that you don't think you want to watch or something that you're a bit sensitive to, then I recommend not watching them. Also, this video itself does does show a lot of these creepy visuals and there may be a jump or two. Just wanted to give a sincere viewer's discretion because I sometimes worry about how people react to certain things. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. So first off, we have Ring of Fire, a short film by Andreas Heikade. And I am not exaggerating when I say this is my favorite short film of all time. Not favorite animated video on YouTube, not favorite animated short film, favorite short film of all time. <laughs> The presentation of this film alone makes it more than worth checking out. There are so many crazy visuals and designs in this crazy town and it's all just so fascinating to look at. It has one of the best scores I've ever heard in my life. It's fun, it's depressing, it's beautiful, it's just outstanding music that fits the film perfectly. There is a story, and it may be a little hard to follow during your first watch, but I honestly don't think it takes a lot to pick up on the key points of it. I do, however, think that it's more of an emotional experience than a film that's written around a narrative. I actually do think the description that the creator left uh, sums it up very well. Two young cowboys spend their days in the cool shade of a rock, but at night make their way to a bazaar of sexual desires. Drifting further and further in, they encounter many dangerous and fascinating characters. Eventually they realize they are completely lost, but by the time they manage to leave, they find that their lives have been changed forever. Well my take on what the whole thing is about is it's about the two different kinds of love. One that comes from affection and one that comes from pleasure. One of the cowboys is shown being very confident and skillful, but at the same time is greedy, manipulative, abusive, a sex freak, and just overall a horrible person. The second cowboy is shown to be awkward, lacking confidence, lacking skills, shy, easy to manipulate, and really unsure of what he wants. However, he is also friendly, protective, loving, and selfless. They eventually encounter a young woman who shares a lot of traits amongst the two, a good mix. She seems to be more confident and adventurous like Cowboy Number 1, but has a lot of innocence, is very selfless, and has a good heart like Cowboy Number 2. I won't spoil what happens, but there's a very problematic member of this trio. I wonder which one it is. Now I guess it's a trigger warning, I must say that this film does have a lot of really depressing stuff in it, it covers a lot of heavy topics, and there's just a lot of dreadful moments in it. But I do think overall it has a very positive ending. I think that the conclusion that it comes to is a very beautiful one and that you should by all means still check it out. Fun fact, the first time that I watched this it was re-uploaded under the title LSD World. I was also tripping on LSD while I was watching it. And uh... Let me just say this, if you have a problem with anxiety, uh, any, any type of drug is bad. Sorry mom, I promise I'll never do it again. So amongst my 4 hour long panic attack, this short film really didn't help. But I was still able to see the beauty in it. I found comfort in the ending. And for that, I strongly recommend it. The link is in the description. I think Ring of Fire is an absolute masterpiece and I don't have a single problem with it. I've been watching it for so many years and I'm really happy I'm finally taking some time to talk about it. I give Ring of Fire a 10 out of 10. Okay, so this next one's a little more well known. Happiness by Steve Cutts. Now when I do a video like this, it mainly will be for recommendations, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any room for criticism at all, because I don't think that this short is perfect. There is no denying how amazing it looks, and if anyone watching this couldn't really get into Ring of Fire, I do believe this one's easier to follow and a lot more lighthearted. Not lighthearted in the sense that it's a more positive topic, uh, it's, a, it's a very negative film, uh, but more positive in the sense that it follows cute little mice characters, and it has a sense of humor, though if you don't like cute little mice characters ripping each other apart from limb to limb, there is at least one part you won't enjoy, but it's brief. 
My big critique with this film is that I feel that it's a little too obvious with the label happiness being pasted everywhere. I feel like Kareem tackled the same issue, but in a more creative way without spelling it out for us. I feel like when you're trying to portray something through visuals and no dialogue, you can be a little more subtle than this. There's just a couple of predictable moments in it, and that's not to say it's a bad short again. I really like it. It's a, definitely a recommendation. I just think it warrants some criticism. I also think Habanera is a very overused track that wasn't a necessity for the short and probably shouldn't have been used. However, that doesn't mean I don't find anything about it clever. I really love how they open it with a pack of rats running which transitions into a lot of them wearing suits. I love the overpopulation bit on the bus, and the ending is actually fantastic. I recommend it just for that. I don't think it's a masterpiece, a lot of people claim it is in the comment section, but if someone told me this was their favorite. I wouldn't hold it against them. Again, it looks amazing. I give happiness a 7 out of 10. Man, we are getting a little too serious with all this talk about depression and abuse. I think we might want to make the next film a comedy. So allow me to introduce you to Bingo the Clown by Chris Landreth. Hi, Bingo! I made a lot of people upset in my childhood trauma video when I did something similar, but this time I added sound. I don't know why I want people to dislike me. I think I might actually be ill. Anyways, Bingo is kind of startling at first, but after my second watch, I honestly started seeing the funny side of it. It's certainly creepy, but once you get used to it, it's just kind of funny watching how crazy all these characters are. They aren't really threatening, they're just unpredictable and loud. And unpredictable and loud can be scary during your first watch. I guess the reason some people would consider this horrifying is because these characters have random outbursts, but I personally think that weird money guy is hilarious. Like I said, it's such a bizarre little short, but I think it honestly wants you to laugh with it. The film was released in 1998, and of course that means it's still kind of an early use of CGI in animated movies, so of course some of it does look a little awkward, but considering the film's tone, I actually think it works very well and still holds up to this day. I don't think a film like Bingo could really happen with today's technology. Not because we're incapable, but because we'd never think to do it. But I don't even think Bingo has bad CGI, it's just really old and limited CGI, which can still come off as extra creepy in a horror film. Though to give it some credit, I do think it did humans better than some of the big guys were doing at the time. And even though I'm mainly laughing while watching it, I do think there is some depth to it as well. The director Chris Landreth's starting point for the movie was apparently a quote from a man named Joseph Jobels. I hope I'm saying that right. Joseph Goebbels. Oh, by the way, he was a Nazi, so you're definitely supposed to see this line in a negative context. I do believe the film portrays it that way. It read, If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. I guess I never really said what Bingo was about, and that's mainly because it's really short and doesn't have much of a story to tell, but it's basically about a regular guy who keeps having the concept of Bingo the Clown shoved down his throat. He is Bingo, and the others want him to know he's Bingo. Whenever he denies being Bingo, he is shouted at. Whenever he accepts being Bingo, he is left the fuck alone. So I think, really, it's about accepting a life you don't want that will make other people get off your back, rather than fighting for a life that you actually want. It gets pretty deep within its short runtime, and I appreciate it for that. There's a really unexpected ending to the film as well, and I'll let you guys watch it yourself. If I explain everything here, there won't be any reason to check it out. For those of you who love scary movies, there's a really good horror element to it, but as I keep saying, I do think it's really funny as well. And intentionally funny. You don't get lines like this. You're a good little bingo. You. And then imagine this being something they want you to take 100% seriously. I give Bingo the Clown an 8 or maybe 9 out of 10. Okay, enough comedy. Did somebody say cannibalism? Molten Light by Jad Van Galen is a music video, and just as a fair warning, it is actually pretty disturbing. I'd say more disturbing than anything I've talked about in this video so far. It's like a horror show that I can't look away from. I think the entire thing is incredibly depressing and it has made me feel very anxious watching it. 
The designs of the characters are really abstract and unsettling. The lyrics repeat the line, I'll find you and I'll kill you throughout the song over and over again. And the story is about two brothers murdering and eating a girl, which not long after results in her spirit rising up to hunt them down. Reading through the comments of the video, there's a lot of cool ideas about what it all means. And my very shared take amongst the people who watch this video is that it's all about your actions and their consequences, and how trying to run away from your problems will only cause them to grow bigger. But in all honesty, when I'm watching this video, I'm more experienced in a strong emotion rather than trying to find meaning in every frame. What's kind of weird about this video is if you read the comments, you'll see people feeling bad for the two brothers, even though they are clearly monsters who deserve everything that came to them. Now you get a lot of people who argue with these people, but when I watch this video, I don't really feel bad for the two brothers, I just feel an incoming dread. The horrible things that can happen to us whether we do something to deserve it or not, and how someone who seems very human can be such a monster. These two brothers seem to care for each other, they have a father, they go to church, they have a home and they take this girl's life and treat it like it's just a normal weekend for them, sitting at the dinner table after a good day's work. The girl is obviously the tragic figure of this video. She was killed in her own bedroom for the temporary enjoyment of these two sick people, but the reason I think some people feel bad for the two brothers is because the dread they experience throughout the whole video. The only positive thing for her is she doesn't see it coming, and then it's over. The two brothers absolutely deserve their fate, and the only reason I can imagine a person having any sympathy for the two is the time they have to suffer the weight of what's coming. The time they have to think about the different path that could have avoided it. But it doesn't really matter, does it? It's too late. But hey, it's just a stupid cartoon, right? Look, it's a very good video, it's very well animated, it has a lot of meaning to it, I think it's very good, it's just really dark and depressing. And to an extent, all four of these have features like that. I do think Bingo the Clown, funny enough, is the most innocent of the four, but even then, it's a lot of creepy imagery, and the meaning behind it can be a little upsetting. So, I hope that none of these have made anyone watching this feel depressed or anxious, and I want everyone to remember that there is a light at the tunnel of all four of these, as hard as it may be to seem. And if you really need to switch things up after watching this video, let me recommend one last short to you. Diaper Ball Z by Max Gilardi. Krill in the diaper, baby. Krill in the diaper, baby. I know where diapers. I know where them. I know where diapers anymore. <laughs>